Okay. Um, before we start tonight's meeting, I just wanted to have a moment of silence for one of our own employees and several other members of the local community that were impacted by the boat accident down off the Channel Islands early Monday morning. So if you could just give us a moment of silence as our hearts go out to those involved. Okay, thank you. Um, next item, roll call shows all of our board members are here. Um, there's a notice that the, there is a public hearing scheduled for September 17th regarding receiving input on the triennial, triennial report on public health goals. And so then the next item is the consent agenda. Is there anyone on on the board that wishes to remove an item? Nothing. Nothing, nothing here, anyone in the public? All right. I will move the consent agenda. I'll second. Moved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. Um, the next item is the uh, oral and written communications. Um, this is a time where the public can address the board on items not on tonight's agenda. You have three minutes each. Becky Steinbrenner, I'm sorry, I thought you were still talking about the public hearing. I didn't realize you had moved on to the consent agenda and I did want to pull um, item 3.4 from the consent agenda. That's already been dealt with and voted upon. All right, it was not clear to the public that you were on to the consent agenda. I'm well, sorry. I said consent agenda. Okay. After the announcement, so I'm sorry, but now it's the time for public comment right, on items not on tonight's agenda. In my time, I will address the Pure Water SoCal schedule in the consent agenda item 3.4. I want to make it clear that um, I am pursuing this vigorously, and I take great offense when your general manager tells members of the public in public meeting that the case has no merit. As my communication says, he is not an administrative law judge and he has no right to uh, disqualify the case publicly in that manner. So I would uh, ask, as I did in my letter, that you preface all opinions, personal opinions, with those qualifiers. I also um, want to ask on uh, the um, agenda, the uh, Pure Water SoCal schedule, it talks about in 2020, um, the uh, uh, final design of the um, injection wells. You've already got one built. You've already built the Twin Lakes Church uh, injection well. And so I feel that that is disingenuous to say that, and also that you did that work without any final anti-degradation evaluation of impacts of that well recharge testing to the groundwater, and that is not um, acceptable. I also want to say that um, I really hope that you continue to reach out to the live oak community. It does not cure and correct the um, illegal uh, that, that you did not contact them at all after the revised scoping period to include the treatment plant in their neighborhood. That is a disadvantaged community and I feel like you took advantage of them and ignored the public outcry that you were experiencing in your own neighborhood here in SoCal and swept it under the rug in Live Oak. I finally want to con uh, communicate about this new policy on communications. Nowhere in your board packet are the communications. I have one, and it is available um, on the website, but it is not it is not included in with your board packet. And I discussed this with you last time. Director Jaffe asked that it be discussed, and it is not on the agenda yet. So I would like to ask your board to put it on the agenda for next. Uh, meeting. And finally, I would like to ask that you do some weed abatement in the West Annex property. Thank, Thank you. you. 
there anyone else that wishes to address the board on an item not on tonight's agenda? No, since I asked for it to be on the agenda, I'll leave it up to staff to determine what the best time for that is. Yeah, and one, one small step we did take in that direction, if you look up on the screen, and I think we're on this screen right now, we're not on your Oh, okay. Um, what you can do is you go right to the agenda. We think it's a, a much better kind of a best management practice uh, to link it directly to the agenda that it's related because often people submit things again and they'll show up in the minutes of the meeting in the next meeting packet which makes it hard for people to find so if they go here to this link that's in the agenda and it shows um, you can go right to the all letters and submittals not just the letters uh, submitted but sometimes there are PowerPoints presented at last moment and they'll be congruent with the time but we'll bring it back as an item but this is just a small step in trying to uh, again make it as easy as possible on the public thank you other public members wish to address the board on items not on tonight's agenda <clears throat> yes my name is uh, Scott McGilvray I live in Live Oak <clears throat> I have been here before uh, to let you know about the water conditions in Santa Cruz because uh, they're your neighbor and they have extra water. So I'm going to give you an update uh, tonight. Um, last year, as we demonstrated, there was enough water to supply Soquel Creek with 500 million gallons from North Coast water in Santa Cruz. And um, this year, there's even more water in the North Coast. It's about 15 percent higher. We're not done with the year. I also like to point out that if you look in this morning's Sentinel, you can see that Loch Lomond is at 97.3%. So that source of water has not been used. And of course, the Santa Cruz uh, did not take any water for the fourth year in a row from San Lorenzo River in the winter to put into Loch Lomond. The reason I bring these up is to point out there is abundant water. And to make a suggestion, I attended the Water Commission meeting um, in Santa Cruz last week spoke with two commissioners on the side and they would entertain a proposal from Soquel Creek to increase the time period during which you can receive water from Santa Cruz. The CEQA permit at the present time limits that time period for transfer of water from November through April. Now here we are at the end of August, 1st of September. There's abundant water that could be transferred that doesn't put Santa Cruz at risk. So I'm asking and I'm hoping that this body will put together a communication to Santa Cruz that is publicly available because we need to know in Santa Cruz to urge them to accept the proposal to buy some water from Santa Cruz at a price commensurate with what you'll pay for the operation and maintenance of uh, Pure Water Soquel. That's, I think, $2,000, million, $2 million a year, about $4,000 an acre foot. This would be very good. For, oh, I have a whole other minute. Uh, this would be very good for your customers, be very good for seawater intrusion issues. Won't bother Santa Cruz at all. Rosemary Menard announced a new policy in Santa Cruz. Well, a new plan she's trying. She calls it no regrets items, where we can do items that we will have no regrets about. And with this amount of water in the system, Santa Cruz would have no regrets by sending you the water. There is no risk to their system to be incurred by letting water come to you. So I hope that these facts would be of interest to you and that you might consider that. Thank you very much. Thank you. I have to leave. I will have to stay, but I'm going to do okay. the radio. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Scott. I, I just, you know, this is a good year. My, my concern is what happens in bad years, what happens with climate change. But I, I will pursue talking with water commissioners to see what, what, what they might entertain. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Hi, Dr. Hill. Hey. He was one of my son's teachers at one point in time. <laughs> my name is Chris Kirby. I live in Seascape, close to where Tom lives, and we've lived here for 22 years. Our bill used to be about $80 every two months with a family of six. Yes, my sons have moved out, and our bill now is $253. We're not doing, we're actually, we're, we've reduced water usage because there's less of us. Somebody said something about me having a green lawn. Yes, we do have a lawn in the front because we have two dogs. I do not want my dogs peeing on a plastic lawn that won't get washed off. It'll, it's just not good. So the lawn works for us because we do have dogs. 
Seven, 2007, our bill was $25 a month. It's now 250 What, wh how do, are people on fixed income supposed to support this kind of water bill? I am not for the recycling plant. I think there's other solutions after talking to Scott and Becky, there's other solutions and I don't feel that you people have done, I mean, I'm sure you think you've done your homework, but what Scott just proposed makes a total amount of sense to me. Um, it's a, it's a ton of money. I feel bad for the old people that are on, or our people, are not, they don't have to be old to be on a fixed income. They cannot afford this. On Aptosia, on Facebook, on Nextdoor, people are bitching and moaning continually. I mean, they can't afford it. And you people work for us. We are the owners of the municipality. And I don't know why you think you have this endless checkbook. It's not there. These people, this is hurting people. This, do, this recycle plant does not seem like the answer. It seems like there's so many other choices. So I, I just, you need to be aware out there that people are talking and I know I wrote a letter and I got this blah, 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 blah letter, this canned response. I don't think you're listening. You people work for us and I think all of you should be recalled. I think we should, I mean, somebody has suggested that and I'm like, oh God, just what I need is another thing to do. You need to listen and make, uh, uh, look at all the choices. Because this recycle plant scares the hell out of me. What about the chromium six in our neighborhood? I have so many women friends who have breast cancer. More than the average of one in seven. It's way more than that. Two of my, my book club people, there's six of us have it right now. I, I'm not willing to drink this recycled water that you think is gonna be pure. Drugs, the pharmacy stuff doesn't come out of it. Um, the, I guess the, the fake sugar doesn't come out of it. Now the plas plastics are in Tahoe water. I, I don't want it. It just seems like there's other choices. And, I, and on a fixed income, a lot of people cannot afford these increases. Okay, thank you. I, um, I did offer. <laughs> I did offer to meet with, with you and no one has contacted me. So if you want to discuss in that, in that letter, there was it's specifically the last paragraph said Dr. Lehue is willing to meet with you, well, you don't and discuss this because I there's there is side. I would say contact me and pick a time, and I'm happy to do that. But I think there is a lot of misinformation out there, and I'd like to be able to listen to your concerns and talk to you about it. A time, your time's up. Your time's up right now. That's an offer that I still hold out there. My name is Tom Stumbaugh, I live in Aptos. Ever since I began coming to these meetings, there have been people saying that there's plenty of water available without your silly project, your costly silly project. Now, are these people all lying or what? I've heard that the city of Santa Cruz is offering you water, and all you have to do is ask for it, and you won't ask for it. That's what I understand. If I'm wrong, please correct me. You're wrong. The city has never offered you any water. Well, that's a surprise to me, because I've read that they have, and that you won't ask for it. Now, there's plenty of water available without this project. Why do you insist on going ahead with this totally out of sight, expensive situation? Now, uh, to, to uh, back, add to that, my understanding is that uh, we were told that, uh, I was told that my rates would go up $5 a month well, they're going up more than that, more than $5 a month. And they're gonna do that for the next four years. Uh, I don't appreciate being uh, used by you folks for your aggrandizement. I don't know what it is that you insist on this silly project 
when there's, I've heard, and I'm sure it's true, that there's plenty of water available to you folks. All you got to do is get busy and figure out how to get hold of it and use it instead of this silly, what a, how many million dollar uh, treatment facility you intend to uh, put online. But there's one thing that is for damn sure, excuse me, there's one thing that is for sure, and that is you cannot remove all of the uh, harmful stuff in that water by it, even by sending it through reverse osmosis. You cannot remove all of the impurities, and if somebody gets sick or dies, that's on you guys, on you. Thanks. Anyone else? How's it going? Um, I'm Corey Tamblin. I live in Aptos. Um, I don't. I don't know much about water, and uh, you know, I just noticed my bill went up, and uh, <clears throat> I've never been to a council meeting like this, so I don't know what sort of interaction you guys have, uh, but I was just kind of looking at like the, I barely under, understand my bill as it is, but um, you know, just uh, adjusting that, that first tier to allow for like what the average like family of four uses. Like, so we called down um, <clears throat> and they told us that like on average, it's 50 gallons per person per day about. And um, I don't know if you guys are open to kind of adjusting for that, that first tier to kind of be more congruent with like what just common families use. I don't know what the, the process on like voting for that is. I just know that like it, jump, it jumps dramatically, you know, from that $6 to like $29 right away. And so like, like considering like sort some sort of like gradation that kind of goes up up higher, not that such of a, a huge hike. It, it really it makes it it makes a huge difference. Um, and I don't know if this is a forum to kind of talk about that or like I don't know like how you 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 pull that sort of like model. You know, I'm sure it's kind of I, I don't know what it's based on, but. Maybe you could kind of speak to that. I, I, I don't know. Okay. Um, thank you. you have, go ahead. You have some more time. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, so, so it's, not, it's not an exchange? I, I actually have uh, some well, information. When everybody's done everybody's talking, done. sometimes we'll, we'll ask for staff to respond to okay. certain questions. So we'll try, try to do that. Okay. okay. That's fine. But we All don't right. have a back and forth question answer. Okay. Well, if you'd like to, you should come to the district, uh, the people that, front office can talk to you about it and we would be any one of us on the board would okay. be happy to talk but to you about it but if and how we came at those rates it was a struggle it's been a real struggle yeah yeah okay thank you all right um so we'll just let everyone speak for Good evening. Uh, my name is Mark Shugart. My family and I have uh, lived in the district since 2004. And uh, we've seen a lot of things happen in the district, like my bill keeps going up. And we've done a lot of the uh, conservation uh, measures that you've asked us to do, the low flow toilets, the shower heads, the don't flush every flush. Uh, the landscaping, I know a lot of people let their lawns die, but it seems like we're doing a lot, but the price keeps going up, and uh, it doesn't quite make sense to me. The, uh, yeah, there's, uh, you keep saying there's salt water intrusion, there's, all kinds of things happening and I know that you have just 
drill the well over by Twin Lakes Church, I guess, to percolate water down into the aquifer. Um, my question is, is, another question is, where are you getting that water and, and wherever you're getting it from, how are you going to get it to that site that, uh, I don't know if you intend to uh, do a lot of uh, pipe work and excavation and things like that, but that really sounds expensive. Mm -hmm. If you're getting the, the water from uh, the Santa Cruz treatment plant, uh, seems like you'd have to cross Highway 1 somewhere. Now that, that just sounds tremendously expensive. And uh, projects like that, I'm sure my water bill is going to go up. And uh, I, just, I just don't like that. I'm, I'm, a, I'm against that. My water bills go up, and I'm the one conserving all the water. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Public comment? Yes. I give you that courtesy. Good evening, folks. Sorry. Good evening, folks. My name is Chris Weber, Rio Del, Mar Del Moro. First of all, my condolences for your peers or friends that uh, perished in that boating accident. That's, that's unfortunate. Um, I just wanted to echo what two of the other individuals just said a couple minutes ago. Uh, my wife and I were somewhat surprised with our water bill this past month. It was $422. Mm -hmm. We don't have a large house and uh, we have all the low flow stuff. Uh, the one thing I did notice is that the tier two rates had gone up 350% this month versus last year's same time. So I just wanted to point that out and say that that seems like a rather large increase there might be some reasons and again this isn't the forum to to dive into that but i just wanted to make that uh make that known to you so thank you thank you mm -hmm. understood okay mr basso your copy and a copy for the record let me sign that copy though uh, you're counting by second. I haven't started yet. Yes, you have. Okay, I'm Colonel Terry Maxwell, and I'm a rate payer and a customer, and I'm well informed about the conduct of this board, this water district for decades now, having learned from people who've been customers for 40 years. And many of those 40-year customers are very sophisticated and they consider this board to have behaved for 40 years negligently in many respects, especially the last 25. Now, I've submitted another document for you to put in the record, the permanent record, consistent with the Brown Act and other both federal and state law requirements, because you're subject to the Federal Freedom of Information Act, by the way, because of the federal dollars you're both seeking and in some cases obtaining. The subject of my document is abuses of Miss Becky Steinbrenner by the Soquel Creek Water District attorney, Mr. Basso et al involving the wrongful, culpable complicity, illegal actions, approvals, and directions of the entire Soquel Creek Water District Board and its senior management officials, i.e. Messrs. Duncan and Dufour and also Mr. Basso et al. Two, violations of the public trust by all members of the Soquel Creek Water District Board of Directors and individual senior management officials such as Messrs. Duncan and Dufour and also Mr. Basso. This is delivered in person to you for your record and copies available. I ask that each one receive a copy. A, Ms. Becky Steinbrenner has properly filed a legal action to compel this board and the senior staff to comply fully with the California environmental laws and statutes that are in place to protect the health, safety, and legal rights prerogatives of all of us residents, water customers, ratepayers, and user consumers of this district. Ms. Becker, Ms. Steinbrenner is a layperson. She has courageously, generously, and most ethically properly filed a legal action to compel your compliance with the law, which you have not done. You've not considered all alternatives, for example, asking you to fully comply with the California environmental laws. Clearly, you've acted in intending to had Mr. Basso file an action to seek outrageously a $6,500 sanction against Ms. Steinbrenner, who's done nothing but try and stand up to protect the public. 
Nothing could be more wrongful, unethical, prejudicial, absolutely torrid of you. And you're all complicit in Mr. Basso's unethical wrongdoing towards Ms. Steinbrenner. I will say what Mr. Welch said in the McCarthy hearings to the very evil performing Senator McCarthy. Mr. Basso probably remembers this. Have you no honor? Have you no honor, Mr. Basso? Have you no honor, board of directors here? Why do you abuse this lady who's asking you to simply comply with the law? Your failure to do so makes you all complicit in additional wrongdoing. And, she, if the, and I urge you, as I say in here, with, direct your attorney to immediately withdraw this outrageous motion for sanctions that he obtained from an equally ethically uh, pre troubled and handicapped superior court in this county. Thank you. Is there anyone else that wishes to address the board? Seeing none, then Ron, you had a, a comment. Yeah, on I mean, the, I, I can understand the way uh, some people feel. We took about a year and a half long process with many members of the public to do the, the rate uh, development. So on a, I'll pull up a couple things just to, to show that are related to their questions. Let's the rate chart local from, we have this over here. Okay, let's, let's change it. So just a couple things that may help set from some perspective because I certainly understand your frustration. The orange is our rates, our new rates for this year. The other ones are other local agencies. You can enlarge that if you can, Shelly. Um, so San Lorenzo, for example, uh, Santa Cruz's rates are higher outside the district. This is before they've raised their rates. These are with our raised rates this year, okay? And they, and I know all these agencies have big projects coming up. So let's go to the, that's just local, but the next slide, can you go to the, mm -hmm. okay, is more regionally. We took agencies our size, this is off a stat da, uh, state database. The, they're sorted by average bill or whatever, this is directly off their database. And we're in the, for agencies our size, we're not even in the middle, we're lower middle as far as cost. Now I understand, and let's go to one other. So that's just where we are today. I certainly understand, um, I think it was Gary with the large family. You know, a tiered structure is very hard the way it is now on a, on a, on a family such as yours. Uh, we were challenged in court and lost on a, a more tiered structure, so we, we have to do what's uh, justifiable by the uh, state, by the state, Prop 218. Um, so sympathies go out to, to large families with this kind of structure, but every agency I know in this area has a tiered structure. The higher you go, the more you pay. We just happen to have a two-step, most have three or four. But the next one is, is there water available? And that seems to be a big question. The gentleman who left earlier so let me go, go to that one. So this one is from the city of Santa Cruz, and this was correcting, a, I think, an editorial from that gentleman. I did not say that we don't need a supplemental supply project. So this is talking about our supply project. I think it says, in fact, I said the opposite. This is from the director of the Santa Cruz Water. Director of Santa Cruz uh, Water. And then if you go down to the, and it says right there, in fact, I said the opposite, we would have water available to transfer, just the opposite. So this is coming from the city of Santa Cruz water director saying they do not have this, refuting the accusation that you heard tonight. We go down to the fourth, or the red right there, right there, you got it. It talks about cost. I don't believe in this case, particularly believe that it would be uh, cheaper and it, their water than ours. And I'm gonna get to an engineering statement in a second, particularly if we get more funding, we've already gotten over $2 million for our customers if we get additional funding. So then there's another memo, I won't show it, it even goes on, it was published I think June 5th or something, they came out saying they did definitive modeling analysis showing not enough water. Matter of fact, pull that memo up, we'll just show a chart. And then we'll close it with the engineering analysis. Um, uh, yeah, that's it. Uh, I think, maybe that's not it. That's all right, let's go to the one at the top. So the, the, no please, please be respectful. Right please be respectful. So go down to table three. So, and I met with all the, I met with the water director from the city of Santa Cruz, San Lorenzo Valley, the county, all, all of us water directors today met. We met, free, we meet frequently, so we're all, always sharing things. This table three here is what people talk about 
uh, we had an uh, engineer do this, Brown and Caldwell, they're a well-known engineering firm, and they compared the river transfer options, even though we're gonna plan on doing some of that because resiliency is the key, but if you look at option one, in the, in the left to, in option two, those two, you can look at the bottom line there, the cost per acre foot. Acre foot's enough to serve four households. So one option's about $11,000, the other one's about six, and the other one's about five. Pure water is on the right, and that's the cheapest option. So what we're trying to do as staff and the board is find an option that supplies the water in the most environmentally and financially sound manner. There is a lot of misinformation out there. We've taken a year and a half on this process just for rates on this, besides working with the city of Santa Cruz for several years. This is their handwriting, this is not ours. Would we love to have inexpensive water? Yes. Is that illegal to their customers? Yes. How can they give us water cheaper than what they charge their customers? They can't do it. So I, I, those are some slides we presented earlier. I had them on there, I just wanted to, to I know that some of you come in here with, with differing levels of information. You're certainly welcome to contact me. I'm Ron Duncan, the general manager, and I'll, I'll share more with you. I'd be, you know, yeah. privileged to do that. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Ron. Thank, thank you, Ron. And I will just say that um, also we, we do, we, are, we wrestled with the idea of trying to somehow someday do water budgets where, um, you know, there, you account for the number of people in a household. Um, it wasn't feasible this last go around, but I'm surely open to looking at that again because it, it does make it um, hard on the people with more people in the family. It just that's that, and it and it's not a completely fair system that way. Um, so, so Ron, right. uh, thank you for showing those. Yeah. Are there places on our website where this information is? I believe all this information is on our website. Uh, I'm seeing a head uh, uh, back there. I think if you go under. Uh, community water plan uh, it'll be either under there or pure water SoCal depending on what it's directly related to yeah, but yeah okay. I think we pull I know, everything I know it's there's a limited staff but to the degree that's possible I'd like to make it easy okay. for the public to access this okay yeah. if they're not yeah. on there maybe we'll make sure a, maybe it's a, I think they uh, are but they may easier access or easier to find or something yeah I don't know I oh. haven't been on the, the pages recently so I don't know it might be fine now well yeah. I know it, for me the same kind of thing happened and I thought it was because my mother was staying with me and she was using the bathroom more and um, it turned out I had a toilet that was not running all the time but sporadically was running and it my bill went from like $70 to 250 for three months so the other option is to see if somebody from the district can come and see if there's any kind of leak because that's what features. I eventually did. I could have saved okay. myself a lot of money if I had checked yeah, that Yeah, we have early. a free service. Free service. All right, so we're going to move and on. It's free. Um, yes, Bruce. I have a few things to mention. Yeah. Uh, some of the confusion may be that we, we did an experiment with the city of Santa Cruz, which allowed us to bring a little bit of their water over here. We had to pay for it. Um, it was like $300 an acre foot, uh, we, and we that was going on. This is the last year of that, so. Um, and I know some people would like us to continue that, but unfortunately the city has already been sued by some of their customers because the $300 we're paying is a lot less than what their customers are paying for, and that's illegal. If, it, if this wasn't a limited time experiment, I think the city would have impossible things to defend that. Um, and you heard from Scott earlier, he was saying $4,000 an acre foot or thereabouts. Notice that currently, what we pay for water, I mean, what it, what it costs us to pump it out of the ground is $150 an acre foot. So notice going from $150 an acre foot to $4,000 an acre foot. And you can see why we're having to raise rates. That $400, $4,000 an acre foot will probably be more than what the pure water, because pure water, we can get grants for. We're looking to get half that facility paid for by grants. And if we can do that, then it's a lot cheaper than what we're ever going to be able to get it from the city for. And that's, that has been repeated by the city of Santa Cruz over and over again. They've also said that um, they do not have enough water to solve their problem and our problem. So if we go with the city, um, if there's a drought, we don't get any because they need it for their customers. And they actually and, need pure and, water SoCal. And pure water SoCal is the only thing that makes it 
sustainable in this community. We've done modeling, the city's done modeling, and it shows the only thing that allows the city's transfer and then return to work is to have pure water, putting 500 million gallons of water into the ground every single year, whether it's a drought or no drought. And in terms of water quality, uh, the pure water, for example, Orange County's been doing this for like 40 years. They do 100 million gallons a day of purified water. And their water is purer than our groundwater and our groundwater is probably 10 times purer than the stuff the city is pulling out of the, the, the river. Um, I used to be on the regional board and we put the city and the county on notice because there was excess nitrate in that river water. And why was that? You go up the river, there are thousands and thousands of circuit systems that some of them haven't been maintained in 50 years. And so all that stuff that people flush, their, their pills, their medicines, everything goes into the river and they have a treatment plant to kill bacteria and so forth, but they don't have a treatment plant that's designed to take all that stuff out of the water like pure water is. But not but, not, sorry, and the time for public comment has passed. Now's the time for board comment. Mm -hmm. And so in terms of purified water, I don't want to drink the city's water. I want to drink pure water because that's going to be the purest water we ever have here. Okay, anyone else? Not me. No? No. Okay, we're going to move on to item 6.2, um, which is to approve funding for structural evaluation of Pringle Reservoir. Good evening. So earlier this summer, uh, the state every three years comes and uh, does a survey of our facilities. And this year they did notice, uh, not that it wasn't there in prior years, it's just this year as they pointed it out. Um, there was a buckle in the Pringle tank, and there's an image of it up on the screen. And they've asked the district to provide a assessment from a structural engineer to verify that it's not uh, compromising the reservoir. And so this was not budgeted for, not accounted for, so we're asking for that to be funded through operating contingency reserves. Sounds hmm. reasonable. That Sounds required. <laughs> Um, the only question I have is um, they've already, just to confirm that they've already done enough of an inspection that the additional work does not require more inspection. They don't need to visit the site anymore. Okay. They, they've they, done they a got enough information from their first visit? Yes, that okay. they do not need that, to return, that, that but okay. they okay. still need to perform some of the calculations. Right. I just wanted to make sure they didn't need any more. That's correct. Okay. All right. So what is that test? That is limited to the buckled area. They don't have to visit, and they do not are not going to do uh, an inspection. And I get I get that, but the AWWAD one hundred <laughs> is that a yeah? They're going to run some calculations on on the tank based on where the location of the buckle is to see how much force there is on the on the tank and the thickness. It's a mathematical test. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Question, other uh, questions or comments from the board? Any um, public members wish to make a comment on this item? Seeing none. I move approval. I'll second. Moved, second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries unanimously, thank you. Um, next item is 6.3, um, to fund emergency main relocation on Wharf Road. Yeah, another uh, item that was not included in the budget on August 14th, uh, the County of Sanitation District was in the process of replacing their uh, sewer main. Uh, they're digging it out and replacing it in, in the same place, but they did uh, find one of our water mains up on the hill here, up, up under the trestle. And after that was repaired, they continued to work on their project and they found that our water main back in the 60s was um, sharing the same trench above the sewer line. And so they're unable to do that work until we uh, relocate uh, the pipe. And so that is um, planned to be done uh, kind of as a time and materials approach. Uh, we've already bought the materials and they're gonna supply the labor and equipment to do it under our direction. That's about 360 feet. Um, so this is we hope a very a high estimate, but we didn't want to have to come back to you, but we do want to get authorization prior to moving forward, um, and it'll be billed uh, at, at cost. Great. Plus profit. Bruce. 
And I think the standards require that water mains not be on top of the sewer mains, that they be separated, correct? That's correct. So again, we have to do this. Yes. Mm -hmm. Other questions? Yeah. So is this an opportunity to put in purple pipe, recycled water pipe, at the same time? Wrong location. It has to be separated. It has also. to be separated. And it's yeah, not. this is our our distribution Different system. Water. Yeah, I, I understand that that the the water main has to be separated from the recycled water main. Purple pipe. The purple pipe. Yeah. Anyway. And well, this is the actual sewer system, the sanitary sewer that the county is working on. So we don't want to put purple pipe near that anyway. So. Um, yeah, not in this situation. I just urge since we there's there's potential source of recycled water to whenever possible lay the pipe down so they can get to houses get to parks etc okay uh, thank you doesn't sound like it's a, a, an opportunity case. other questions any public comment on this item okay I'll move approval of both motions I'll second all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Thank you. Um, 6.4 update and direction regarding the stormwater recharge evaluation. This is a really interesting. Thank you. Yeah. So back in 2016, the board directed us to evaluate the possibility of collecting stormwater and using that to recharge the groundwater basin. And so uh, since 2016, we've done a number of, of different kinds of uh, paper investigations and, and mapping investigations, as well as some field investigations. And uh, this report here is the results of the most recent investigation that we did to assess the feasibility of using stormwater for deep infiltration. Um, it, it's the most thorough, and so it's built off of all of the work that's been done to date, including the dual EM electromagnetic survey, where we um, use that technology to try and gauge what the first 30 feet of, of soil looked like. Um, and the locations that we're looking at, uh, there were several locations at the Seascape Golf Course, as well as the uh, county-owned facility detention basin at 38th and Bromer Avenue. And so uh, the, the county's actually been spearheading uh, this part of the investigation with support from the district staff. And so they uh, retained um, MME engineering firm to go out and basically um, for the areas that had been identified as uh, most feasible in the dual EM study to collect additional borings in those areas as well as percolation tests. And so the results um, are in the table here. Uh, the findings indicate that there's a couple locations on the golf course that look the best of, of the sites that we looked at. Um, one of the sites at Seascape Golf Course was not feasible at all, uh, as well as the 38th and Bromer site because the depth to groundwater there was very shallow. So that that was unfortunate because that's a you know big stormwater collection area. Um, the sites at the golf course that looked the best included um, the 14th fairway. And uh, that's an area where uh, the golf course has identified a lot of erosion and other problems with flooding. Uh, that site looked like it could collect about 12.8 acre or 12.4 acre feet of water and get that down into the ground if 12 dry wells were installed. Um, that location is somewhat uh, remote. It's located. Uh, kind of at the edge of the golf course and you have to go away ways through the golf course to get equipment down there. So feasibility wise, it, it's probably the, the harder site to work with. And so the cost of that, in addition to the, the number of wells that would be needed for that amount of water is pretty high. It's 2,800 acre feet uh, per year. And, and these cost estimates, I wanna stress that they're very preliminary. Uh, they don't include staffing time, they don't include permitting, environmental permitting requirements, and they're just based on preliminary design. So um, 
you know, the next step would be if, you know, there was a desire to do more work that we would go back and refine possibly um, for the, the sites that look the most feasible, those cost estimates and do some additional design work. Um, the other site that looked good at the golf course was this um, Los Altos South site, which is located pretty close to the clubhouse. Um, and it's a more accessible area. There was a little bit less water available, um, but only six wells are estimated to be needed um, to get that water down into the ground, possibly. Um, you know, it's still, there's still some uncertainties about that. Um, and it's really hard to measure, you know, whether you can actually get that or not. So these are just engineering estimates, and that was $1,600 per acre foot. So um, what we're kind of recommending is the next steps after we see what kind of funding we can possibly get working with the county and the county possibly pulling in um, other partners into the project because the project does have uh, other significant benefits such as flooding prevention and stormwater pollution prevention. So pulling in the County Public Works Department um, and possibly some other folks um, to, you know, move this project along and help fund it. Um, also looking at some grants, there's some Prop 1 grant funding that um, Sierra Ryan with the county is looking at. There's also some stormwater funding, grant funding that's coming up. So we're going to be working with Sierra to kind of keep our eyes on that and, um, you know, move ahead with, with those applications if, if we think there's, you know, a significant chance of, of getting some funding for the project. But, you know, we don't know what partners are going to be involved and how much it's, you know, ultimately going to cost. So uh, what we're suggesting is that we, we continue to keep working on the project and that we come back to the board possibly um, after the start of the year or, you know, five or six months from now with an update on, on how things are looking and uh, get your feedback and see if you want us to pursue any further work with district funding. Um, we don't have any money in our budget this year for stormwater recharge and so um, it would be good timing to come back to you before we start putting together next year's budget if and see if you're interested in, in you know, approving any funding for this work. Well, I, I appreciate that work and I really um, like the fact that it's got multiple partners. Mm -hmm. It's a perfect one for that so that it's not just district customers because it has other benefits. Mr. President. Yes. I don't think it's a conflict, but just in the interest of full disclosure, I didn't realize that MME was doing this work. They did it for the county. MME is a tenant of my wife and I and my sister-in-law. Okay. I had nothing to do with this The county project. contracted with MME and okay. we didn't have any, any funding in that, so, um, yeah. Carla. Yeah, I just wanted to, uh, did you, has there any, been anything from the golf course too, especially for the top one, because that's where a lot of the flood the seascape 14th fairway mm -hmm. major yeah I think be, that's probably the that. site that they would be most interested in because it's where they have the biggest amount of, of damage from flooding and erosion um, but it's also the most expensive and with 12 wells uh, that would possibly interfere with golf course play to install those wells some of them are are located you know, not the, not off to the side of the course, but actually kind of on the course. Is that on the other side of a, like a ravine from Dolphin? Yeah. Pump station? Mm -hmm. Okay, I know exactly It's a big that drainage that comes out there. Mm -hmm. So it's created sinkholes and other problems for them. Seems like they'd really want to come up, maybe there's a different configuration of the golf course even if they, you know, want to fix that. Yeah. Bruce. So I'm certainly supportive of this, especially, like Tom said, if it's a um, multi-agency project. Um, so one of the obvious decision points is when we have to put money into it. But I'm curious how much time you would have to put into it 
to get to the point where we're able to make a decision on on what the way we want to go or is it being done by others um i would say i mean the county is is driving it um okay but i think they're very motivated to move the project along um they've put in a lot of staff hours and you know so about it's not equal impacting with us. you uh, uh, well, your, Alyssa's your, been um, working on this project quite a bit. In fact, she was really involved in the investigation and this report and finalizing this report. So um, it, it does have an impact on staff, but, um, you know, it's, it's worth looking at, I think, for, you know, to see what kind of funding we can get. It's obviously not going to play much of a part in our water supply shortage. Yeah, and yeah. yeah, so bringing in other partners and, and hopefully at some point we could pass it off to somebody else um, and they could run with it and they'd have a wealth of information and all the work that's already been done. Okay, and another question. In, I don't know if you've dealt directly with the golf course, the new owners. Mm -hmm. But are they aware of seawater intrusion problems? They're very they? aware. We've met with them multiple times. In fact, you know, that was a big, you know, we had to explain why we're proposing to do what we wanted to do. Um, we've met with um, the general manager multiple times. They've been very supportive and uh, as well as the new ownership. And they've also expressed an interest in, in the project. So, okay. you know, Good. they could possibly be a source of funding as well. Mm -hmm. Well, certainly after the discussion t earlier tonight about cost, I think all of us are very sensitive to that. So I think one of the keys is that we not get into this until we have a good idea that this is a good investment for us. I and mean, we can certainly, you know, take one step at a time and eventually re reach a point where we decide, oh, well, this is getting too expensive and that's not a good thing to do. Mm -hmm. So I think we should have a, a, a really sensitive breakdown of all the things that we're going to need to do. So for example, we'll need an EIR or some variant thereof. Uh, we're gonna need a regional board permit because we will be a discharger by doing this. And there are definite requirements for that. So there'll be a you know, monthly testing that has to take place of water quality and then reporting done on an annual basis. And that's gonna go on for the 20 years that you're talking about here. So There's also the operational cost of operational the system cost. and maintenance cost. And so that would all have to be figured out who who owns this who's right. who's paying for all of these long-term costs right mm -hmm. and the regional board might well require that these not just be dry wells but processing wells so that you know the water that comes into them goes through various stages and gets processed which certainly increases the expense of these dry wells and so we need to look into all those things for one thing we need to have a discussion with the regional board of, you know how are they doing these things nowadays and, well, yeah, certainly the, the regulatory framework is um, a little uncertain at this point for stormwater recharge. Mm -hmm. So they're I still, said. it's just very confusing about what is going to be required in terms of permitting and monitoring. And yeah, water rights is also an issue. Mm. Yep. Are you done? Yeah. Okay. So um, I've had conversations with the state water board and the funding over the last few years that it has mm -hmm. and that's why I've been really enthusiastic about doing this project I know that they're looking for a good pro good projects of this type to fund mm -hmm. so I have no doubt that the county can find funding for it because they're looking for um, multi-benefit projects and there's still money in prop one for that mm -hmm. because there's not too many groups around the state that actually work together to get this kind of project so sure and there might be agencies that need to do stormwater mitigation that might be interested in in this project as yeah. their mitigation yeah. source so, and we're, so thank and you because i know this is kind of my baby i've been pushing it yeah. <laughs> and I'm happy that um, the results came out so well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and we, you know, we have a, a, a grant person consulting us, you know, to help us. That's how we've gotten a couple million and hopefully many million more. But when we see things that are interested, it gets slid, slid to Shelley and shared with the county. That that may be for just this. We're not looking at just pure water. We're looking at all potential options out there for grant funding. So. Okay, 
Just um, one point of clarification, Director Daniels, when when you talk about the regional board, I don't know that everybody equates that with the the California State Regional Quali Water, Water Quality, 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 Quality Control, Control board. board. So any discharge yeah. in the state of California. Okay. Yeah, we're, we're in our region. There, well, yeah. there are nine regions, and we're one of them. Such a we're fortunate that you were a member. Yes, and, and Tom. Yeah, and Tom also. So we, we were both on, chairs so of it at one point. <laughs> yeah, so that, mm -hmm. you know how it works. Yeah. yeah. So the only motion is just to provide staff direction on desired next steps and like I said, we could come back sometime in 2020 with an update of what we've learned over the last, you know, the next six months. I want to see if there's any public comment on this item. Thank you, Becky Steinbrunner. Thank you for that report. Um, I was hoping there would be someone here from Mercedes yeah. Miller Engineering. Um, as I read this report with interest, I've been really curious, like Director Lather, to see what was going to come of this. While it's not a, a huge amount of water, I think it could, with multiple projects, provide a cumulative difference within the districts, uh, the basins recharge area. I. I thought it was good news that they found such high groundwater levels in so many places. I mean, in, they didn't even bother to do any percolation tests at the Los Altos North because the groundwater was at three feet below ground surface. That's, that's great. <laughs> Not so good for this, but it's good news that the water levels, the groundwater levels in that area are high. So to that end, um, in the discussion, on um, at the end by uh, Montgomery and Associates, they talked about using some of this information, um, mostly I think with the Bromer Street place, they would be using the US Bureau of Reclamation solution to estimate the recharge capacity. That's a different system than MME used and suggests using um, for the sites that the district evaluated. That's on page 101. Also, I thought it was interesting that in the discussion on page 101 by Montgomery Associates, it talks about using the data that they, um, from the monitoring wells that was used to uh, support some of the modeling for the Mid-County Groundwater Agency plan. And it cites that it used information from spring of 2006 I thought that was curious that such old information would be used when we all know there's much more current information. I also um, had a, a question why the different uh, sites that MME did, uh, Haro Kasunich did the work, that they used different size borings. The Los Altos South site, which looks like it's the most promising, they used an eight inch bore and the others they used a six inch bore or a four inch bore. And it seems rather um, curious to me that for congruity of an experiment that you would use different size holes to do percolation tests. That's on page 55. Um, I thought it was interesting too that um, the groundwater, going back to the groundwater levels at Los Altos South that were at first uh, stated as being perched at seven feet this is page 55. And then went down to 17 feet. And then it said they were at 75. Thank you. If you have more questions for this item, I suggest you address staff. Thank you. I was hoping there'd be uh, someone here that could answer the questions for the public and myself tonight. I think I'd Can there Thank be you. some oh. Thank you. answer to we're my done. questions Thank now? You. Your public comment. Thank you, Ms. Steinberg. Period is done. It's on the agenda. You're allowed to discuss it. And you're allowed to make a public comment, which you have, and you've had your three minutes. Thank and you. if you have further questions, I would take it up with staff. You're very kind. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Colonel Maxwell again. Let me emphasize in the package I've left for you all to receive a copy of. Proposed corrective action includes this board immediately tonight. Is, it, is this germane Wait. to this item? Excuse yeah, me, this is on stormwater. Well, this impacts the stormwater as no, well. No, it has well, to I be a, let's, come on, be real. Be, let's talk about this particular item, which we're well, just getting an update on, on stormwater. Storm, yeah, well, on the stormwater, you've neglected this 
board has neglected for 25 years at least to adequately recover stormwater and make an effort to do so. You've also failed to look at the stormwater off the north slope. And you've also failed to consider consolidation, which would obviate your need for concern of stormwater. And frankly, the, the, the threat uh, that Bruce makes about the state will take all of this over if we don't somehow generate storm water. Stormwater. Stormwater and others. Uh, the state of California or the feds cannot fast enough take over the regional water resources of this entire region. Do away with all of you. Do away with We're your redundant We're talking about staff. stormwater. If you have comments on that item, please keep your comments specific You've not recovered to the item. stormwater for 25 years adequately. So you approve of what we're doing. Thank you. You won't do it adequately. All right. So you've got an idea about direction? Just to come back? Maybe, Great. Uh, do you want a motion? Phil, do that? you want to make a motion? Um, I'll make a motion to um, continue to, to work with the county mm -hmm. to look at this option and figure out if it's feasible or not. And I hope it is. I'll second. Okay. Continue to work with the county on this project and, and other players. Okay. Make sure it's feasible. And make sure it's feasible. Got it. All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. The next item is 6.5, which is the last item of the regular meeting. And this is our. Sure. Hi. Good evening. Um, I'm honored to be able to present this item to you tonight to talk about the um, youth outreach program that the district maintain and has for some time, and also the proposal and direction from the board on the potential of expanding the youth outreach program to the Live Oak School District. Included in the agenda packet is a pretty, um, pretty nice overview of the existing youth outreach program that the district currently maintains which includes presentations, materials, teacher workshops, assemblies, and middle school uh, and high school presentations that Vidahi Campbell has been stewarding since 2001. Um, included um, with those, we do hit about, as I wanna make sure I, I describe this, one preschool, 11 public and private elementary schools, I guess I'm not ready. Right, I got it. Okay, got it. Let me take a break. So, you know, we've probably had the premier uh, public, you know, the school outreach in, in the in the county, if not the United States, for our size. You know, power pack, punch, good use of the money, educating the kids. Uh, not that just on our situation, but that right that. Um, Align with the school curriculum. I know Dr. LaHue, you've had her in uh, advanced science class at, at the high year. school level year after year. I've t I've co-taught with her a few times, and so knowing that and knowing that uh, we're looking to put the uh, purification portion of the uh, facility for Pure Water Soquel in the Live Oak area because they're part of the Mid County Groundwater and Air, uh, Agency. Uh, boundary and, and they pump groundwater so they're also facing seawater intrusion as part of our outreach efforts with them uh, they expressed a sincere interest in us expanding uh, our programs into that area and so that, that's what this is really about tonight and so what you see up here right here on that picture is one of the things that we thought would be appropriate and that's the school assemblies if I don't know uh, is it, I've been to a few of these. Yeah, I mean, they are absolutely amazing. Uh, it gets the kids learning through fun, singing songs. And the feedback from the teachers. Oh, yeah, I think there's a thing in here that says 97 or 90-something percent. There it is, 91 percent response felt that the value of the program, you know, they, they approved. And that's, that's like an unheard of uh, number. But the ones who didn't were probably still laughing too hard from the show they put on. But while they're doing that, they usually incorporate some amazing water information as they go. And they, and they work with us to also incorporate, be specific to our, um, mm -hmm. to our facility. And we go down a picture there. There is Vi and a person who she's worked with, Stu Jenkins, who can also go out and do some of this work if, if we so, more as a consultant. Um, 
So, and you know, we, it, it's not just um, uh, class assemblies, it's, it's, it's individual presentations, it's field trips. Uh, I think some of the people here have been involved with some of the field trips, I know. Uh, it's the whole enchilada. It's that trailer that was built up for $8,000 and it gets hauled around. We just got a call from Cabrillo. They wanted it out there for their kids to see it. Uh, it's award winning. So the, the, it, it's a whole package. But what we're really, the, what this memo is about tonight is not just about this amazing, amazing, probably, uh, you know, I've said it before. I just got to go in that direction. Uh, the thing in the long run that SoCal Creek will be most remembered for is when you, when this board, basically this board came on in the early 2000s, you know, you saw that that was the key. That was the key. People get so confused about water and prices and not understanding the situation. So educating, so VI has educated those K kindergartners to where they're voters now, you know? That's how long this has been going on with a sincere effort, combining art sometimes with uh, water and science to uh, videos you've done that year after year but drawing it back to this memo here what we're asking for and maybe go down to the motions is um, there's another assembly but Zoom Zoom uh, organization is um, if you want to us expand this program out into the Live Oak uh, uh, area and we're what we, we proposed here was the assemblies and up to 22 groundwater science focused presentations uh, to these uh, schools. And um, what we really are proposing tonight, if, if you're interested in both those, is the ability to do up to that. Uh, due to the current situation, we may not be able to do all that, but if you give us the, the authority, mm -hmm. we'll, we'll, we'll take it as far as we can and do what we're able to do. Okay. So, yeah. that, that sound good it's it's, Tot it's really valuable yeah That's totally supportive um, just um, devil at devil's advocate mm -hmm. question mm -hmm. advocacy versus education mm -hmm. so yeah. is, is this is this a truly education versus ad advocacy yeah I mean you have to you know one of the main things when you go into a teacher's schoolroom you've got you've got to align with that curriculum that produces that what's got to be taught so that's that's number one, well, and then, go ahead. I was just going to say, as, you know, as a as a teacher who's had these presentations yeah. in the classroom, I mean, an example is one where, you know, different soil borings are are presented okay. to the students, and yeah. they have that's to education. figure out they have to figure out which might be a good water bearing one. Where would you put your screens? You know, yeah, so yeah. they get to see what a well looks like, what sure. a screen looks like, okay. what the what the cores look like, and they have to do some critical thinking. To try and figure out where they would put a screen, so they walk away with a much better understanding of just groundwater. Right. Plus, and, we have the groundwater and model. I've yeah, and the groundwater. I've model. heard Zoom Zoom, and it's just really fun. You know, it's 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 and experiential education. learning kind yeah. of thing. Yeah. Uh, and there's there's a couple uh, companies out there that do it. I think the upcoming one is actually a different one. We kind of rotate through to give oh, the kids this bang mm -hmm. for the buck. But, uh, yeah, and also, you know, I know personally that by uh, communicating. Uh, work closely with the state uh, science program. They were developing right. a science program mm. uh, curriculum for next generation science standards first, uh, through yeah. high school. And she is working closely with them too. So I think she was making sure she was aligned with what teachers uh, curricula were right. supposed to be. And uh, I, there's one thing I did. I noticed I didn't see uh, Harbor High in there. That's all I you want to see it expanded more. Well, yeah. we, because we already have uh, some work with the three high schools in our own district, or two high schools, three high schools. Yeah, and that's a good that's a good question. We contemplated that. We figured if we went much beyond the kind of the immediate, um, we could certainly do that support prerogative. But then we're starting to get into more MGA type. If we, you know, we looked at the whole MGA basin and then thought, well, that's an MGA maybe. Uh, endeavor mm -hmm. this we could rel it you know pull it into what we were trying to you know walk a balance a line um you know not, what we thought provided I mean, the best i'm not sure where the school district borders are for harbor high they might include some of the same live oak area i just don't know mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. i think if we look at that you okay. know include think, that yeah mm -hmm. well yeah since they have a program for high school yeah and they're science know. oriented right. yeah yeah and and Acknowledge that there's limitations on what we can do yeah. with yeah. our staff. Yeah. 
I, know, I mean, I understand if yeah. right. it's tried to get uh, do this because it, 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 we have to be welcome in the Live Oak area. Right, so. right, and want to provide them, and, and they 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 really said they would relish that, and and not only that, but the facility there to be an educational facility, and I believe I uh, taught the teachers to teach, mm -hmm. right? So yes. she was a teacher of right. the teachers. Well, that's Correct. What I was yeah, that, maybe that's what you were getting at. Right. So invaluable resource to the whole community. Um, questions or comments? Yeah, no. yeah. Well, um, I noticed that the assemblies in the elementary schools are largely about water conservation. And I can't imagine anyone having problems with that. But people surprise me sometimes. But anyway, the other thing I think is that the price, $6,400, is an extreme bargain. So we shouldn't even be talking about it. Just do it. Right. These people this are is, professional. This is so oh, worthwhile. I, I like talking about it. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's, I, think it's uh, I mean, we've just seen tonight a little bit of, you know, what happens right. when there's not a lot of information, you know, not enough right. information out on mm -hmm. right. water and our sources of water and how, what it takes to produce potable water for our customers. And I think the more education we can get out there is, like, the better. It's also kind of nice for us to be doing something that the city of Santa Cruz should be doing since this is their area, but we'll do it. Yeah, everybody has uh, constraints, yep. you know, staffing yep. and whatnot. Yep. We work together, so this I'm is part of that. I talked to their conservation manager today, and he said mm -hmm. he, he seemed excited about it if it, if it got realized. Yeah. All right, any public comment on this item? Um, thank you, Becky Steinbrenner. I'm piecing things together here. And I just want to let you know I'm really sorry. <laughs> Boss. Um, I, I uh, signed up for a gray water system installation through Cabrillo College Adult Education, and Vi came and talked with that group. And I was... Um, a little bit, um, I don't know if the word is offended, but I thought it was a very one-sided communication, one-sided education. So thank you, Director Jaffe, for bringing up the question, is this advocacy or education? I'm satisfied. Because it was definitely advocacy at Cabrillo College when I uh, sat through that. And um, I, I think that by expanding this to the Live Oak Elementary, I, th I think you're trying to cure and correct the, the lack of public outreach in that disadvantaged community for your Pure Water SoCal project when they could have had an opportunity for meaningful and informed public comment, and this doesn't fly for that. I think it's interesting that um, you don't want to go to Harbor High because it's more in the MGA. The Live Oak community is not in your district. It's in Santa Cruz City Water. So if you're going to do this education, and I, I applaud you for that, I would like to have you include members of the Santa Cruz City Water Department because that's who supplies water for this area of the county. It's not your district. And to go out and essentially sell your project to a community that is, has not been provided adequate public comment in the environmental process is disingenuous. And again, I applaud your educational efforts, if they are truly educational. But to make it a well-balanced and well-informed educational presentation. It needs to include representatives from the water district that sells these people, these kids, their families water, and that would really support their more regional understanding of the, the water situation here and where their water comes from. It hopefully will not come from Pure Water SoCal. Thank you. Thank you. Actually, Wanted to make a comment yeah. when, when he's done. He's done. Yeah. Yeah. On the point of education to school children, 
and everyone else. You should point out if you're gonna be intellectually honest and legally compliant, that this board and your senior staff and your attorney have failed to be intellectually honest and legally honest with the facts in many forums and to the public. Are you talking about the education program? On the education, I think you how should does, tell that your educational program. How does this program, relate to that? Your simply, your educational program has to be honest about the big picture. And the big picture is- Have you attended any of these? Matter of fact, I watched one quite a long time ago. If I, th I think it's mm. right yeah, two we'll just years keep ago it on or topic. so. Keep it oh, on yeah, topic. I'm yeah. not sure. But on top, regardless, you have to, in your curriculum should certainly, and content should include the big picture realities, legally and factually, and environmentally. Number one, the compliance with the California Environmental Quality Act, which you have not done, which Ms. Steinbrenner's evidence and facts she's put in the court record. You're stretching proves. the connection well, no, no, to an education and that, program. You should also point out that this is in litigation. You should tell the students at all levels why it's in litigation and why Ms. Steinbrenner has very strong arguments that you fail to comply with the law. You fail to comply with the law because you fail to comply with the technical realities and be honest about them. I'm that's stretching. You're not, and that you're should not, be that really should be in your topic. curriculum. That Great. should be in your curriculum. Do you support on. education or not? I do. An honest, That's comprehensive education. About. Let's let him go. No, I, let's not, not converse. That has that has that is, three minutes and then forget that is that is that is technically and factually sufficient and adequate about the realities here and how we got here. Uh, the overdrafting, uh, the negligence of prior panels of this board, including some incumbent members now. Those should be on the forefront of facing the facts and being honest with them. And the legal ramifications of the Environmental Quality Act in California required you to do, look at alternatives, and you failed to do that in the opinion of Ms. Steinbrenner, and she has convincingly put in the court record that, that why that wasn't done. This has nothing to do with education. And the judge had a conflict of interest that's a mile long. And Mr. Basso's conduct has been unethical towards her. That's a Please fact. Sit down. In Please a way sit that prejudiced the result. You're done. You're done. Okay. I'll, I'll just say that it's just, a shame. I that, wanted to add something. Okay. Just, uh, do you have a comment? Yeah. Serendipitously, I didn't know this was going to be talked about here, but um, I'm one of the parents in Tara Edwards that contacted the district asking for a Zun Zun presentation for mm -hmm. my kindergartner two years ago, and she still talks about it. And um, all, the whole school attended, and they were very impressed. So I just wanted to say thank you. I also, when I contacted, didn't know it was um, free for schools. I was expecting to have to raise some funds. So that was a very pleasant surprise. So I just wanted to say thank, thank you, you for the service. It's great. Thank you. Thank you so much. Tom Stumbaugh Aptos. I just wanted to ask, um, in your presentation to the school children, did you include the fact that treated sewage water contains oh elements of um, pharmaceuticals that cannot be removed from the sewage water even when you treat it with reverse osmosis? so that if they drink the water that you have treated and somebody gets sick or dies from okay we understand this, your concern you will be guilty we're talking about our education program right now huh? okay you're stretching it as well we're talking about presentations to schools no wait a minute i'm talking about what you presented to the children did you include the fact that treated sewage water being pumped into the aquifer will contain various kinds of resi uh, residual pharmaceuticals no, we didn't which could make they, them sick? No, we didn't because let that's not true. Let it go. We, we, we will present scientifically <laughs> appropriate information. Show me, show me where it says that's not true. I've got multiple, multiple places, but we're, we're done with this. We're going to go on to our education program. Okay. Uh, well, go ahead, but be honest with them. We are. Of course. No, oh, I that's don't actually, think so. Okay, well. If you're not your telling belief. them that the water that you're going to pump into their aquifer still contains pharmaceutical residue, then you're not telling them all the truth. 
And that's the fact. You know, I'll, I'll just say that um, I really appreciate your comment from experience. Um, it's disgraceful that people will politicize. Your time the is What's disgraceful? You're done. you're done. He's not talking to you. Wait a minute. He's not talking well, to you're, you. You're, sit down. You're, you're done with you're your public respectful. comment. Tom, Mr. please sit Stumbaugh, down. He's, your, your he's public talking comment. about me. No, he was talking. Please sit down. Sit down. Again, it's disgraceful if any community members um, politicize the honest teaching of schools and children. Um, and I think as testimony of this lady here, her children went home raving about it, making a positive impact. And you know, this district will continue to operate in that vein to hopefully teach and help these kids understand how water works, the future of water, the current situation. So I really appreciate I, the board. I wanted I wouldn't uh, make this motion unless I thought yeah. that's what we were going to do. So I'll make the motion. And, and second it. moved and seconded. Do you want to include investigation of Harbor High? I will include that. I'm, okay. I'm you know, to the extent that we can expand it, I think this is it's good for the community. And I was just going to make one comment before we vote. It's just that I think um, what's gone on with the MGA is something that's also valid to teach to the kids, you know, right. especially the high school kids. Cause getting the big picture for the whole area and seeing how the entire groundwater basin is affected, including all of our district, but also including the Live Oak area. Kids, high school kids can understand modeling and they can, right. and they could, you could, you could even have lessons to figure out, you know, take the facts and have them interpret it. So it just, you know, Right, and I that's why we go into individual classroom teaching at right. that level. I'm is just more saying, it's just, yeah. It's amazing. I think the whole MGA approach of the whole area is good to include. But anyway, there's been a motion yeah. and a second. And I'd like to say that if expanding it to Harbor High or any other additional activities like this, I would be willing to put more money into it. So okay. come back to us if you need Same. some. Same, yeah. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, the meet, um, there are now, we're going to a closed session. And if there's any public comment on the closed session, that would be now. And then there will be uh, a couple of minutes to clear the room. Thank you, Becky Steinbrunner. I'm the petitioner in proper on the legal action you're about to review. Um, Mr. Dufour handed me, um, served me the document of the uh, Judge Schmall's order uh, denying my fourth ex parte application just to get more time. I wanted more time for myself. I also wanted more time for the court to review the documents. The certified administrative record for this case is 90 binders. It's almost 80,000 pages of paper. There will be many, many citations to the administrative record made, both in my opening brief, which I am filing this Friday under court order, and also the, um, your counsel's opposition and my reply. This order only gives the court two weeks to review that information. The court will make their decision on the merits of this case based on that information. Judge Small had to postpone hearing my ex parte because he didn't have time to read the paperwork that was given him both by your two counsels, one of which flew up from Riverside, as she does every time, and myself. Now, there was a misunderstanding on my part. I, had, I thought I had to provide the judge with a paper copy, the hard copy of evidence, because that's what I've been told I had to do for the administrative record. So I had probably about an inch deep of paper, but um, he didn't have time to read it. So he postponed the hearing until four or five days later. And he came back and refused to accept any further paperwork that I had regarding more evidence to support my need for uh, time and to um, vacate this order that was made by Judge John Gallagher, 
who issued the order and then within 30 minutes disqualified himself because he had disqualified himself in writing under voluntary statement of recusal just two years prior because he'd been a trial lawyer with Mr. Basso and he had represented the district for 23 years. He voluntarily submitted his own statement of recusal in John Cole's case, but never disclosed to me that he had done so. I found out from John Cole. So that's why I felt it was um, unethical and he had violated the judicial canons of ethics to make a decision in my case, but he didn't see it that way. So he made the decision to keep this very stringent Thank order. You. Your time is up. And disqualify himself. Thank you for keeping it on topic. Thank you. On this topic, I observed Judge Gallagher's conduct regarding Ms. Steinbrenner. I've observed Mr. Basso's conduct towards her equally wrongful and ethical in both instances. Furthermore, you've broken the law in failing to comply with the Environmental Quality Act and other provisions of California state law. Ms. Steinbrenner is trying to hold you properly accountable. It is pathetic, unethical, and just unjust, the behavior of Mr. Basso towards Ms. Ms. Steinbrenner. What you should do, if you have any honor and sense of justice, Immediately vote tonight or soon to withdraw any motions or requests of this court proposing or seeking any sanction against Ms. Steinbrenner. That $6,500 proposal by your legal counsel is not only preposterous, it's unjust and unethical. It was an attempt to intimidate her. Her rights are clear and her rights are seeking to protect every ratepayer and customer and child who might drink the water. But also to have you comply with the law, which you haven't done. The board must immediately tonight vote also direct your councils to withdraw any challenges to Ms. Steinbrenner's current pending temporary restraining order and restraining order. Again, for reasons that are overwhelming in the record. Especially the full documented and honest considerations of the alternatives such as Lockhofer by Jerry Paul and the North Coast Surface Water Capture. In addition, why do you behave so unjustly? Why do you direct your lawyer to behave so unjustly towards this very Keep your honorable voice down, woman? Please. This very honorable woman who's simply trying to have you comply with the law that every other county and every other water district in California, including this one, has to recognize and comply with. Why do you fail to do that? Why do you fail to show accountability towards the resources of this district? adequate reflected in compliance. Does this have anything to do with reflected this in case? compliance with the Environmental Quality Act. You're off topic again. No, I wasn't. The act is for you to comply with regarding the water resources and the health and well being of the customers here. Very much on topic with the litigation Ms. Steinbrenner has, has correctly brought against you. It is just despicable the way Mr. Basso has been able to wire and manipulate the judges in this matter, such as Gallagher and Schmalls absolutely clear as a bell to everybody who knows this county government and knows the courts here and knows Mr. Basso, many people by reputation. So he's a public figure, he's taken a public role in this, he's done wrong, he's done unethical, and you are complicit with him in doing likewise. The sooner the state of California takes this entire region over for water resources and does away with all of you, the better it will be for the ratepayers, the customers, and the children and future inhabitants of this county. Meeting is now adjourned. Please clear the room.